Hello, hello and hello everyone. Welcome, welcome to my Inspirational Ingle channel. I hope you've all had a wonderful week. Um, it's been beautiful here in the UK. Um, we've been waiting for this weather for a very long time and it's finally here. Um, as you can see behind me, it's so bright, so sunny and so warm. So yeah, we've been enjoying it. We've been soaking it all up. So anyway, my video is a bit longer today. This one is a real session. This one has been on my heart for some time, but I've not been able to talk about it. I've not been able to share it because I couldn't really put it together, to be honest. It was just like, mm. I just left it where it was. But today is the day that I've opened the box and I'm going to speak about it. So that's why I've called it warning sign of the times. Again, it's called a warning sign of the times. So if you don't like eschatology, which talks about end times, then it's time for you to leave now, because that's exactly what I'm going to talk about. End times, last days. Now, a few weeks ago now, it's a good few weeks ago now, I'm telling you, um, the Statue of Liberty was actually struck by lightning. OK, a lot of you may have seen that, you know, you may have you can even Google it now and just have a look. The Statue of Liberty in New York was struck by lightning and it was actually the torch that was actually struck. OK, and I know many of you saw that, but before that actually got struck with lightning, I had a dream. And I saw the Statue of Liberty plain as day, very bright, you know, just as if it was appearing in front of me. I probably could have been in a helicopter. It was that close. And I also saw like a, a red and blue like scarf floating in the air as well, you know, just floating in the air. And these are what I saw. And I said to God, what does this mean? I don't really understand it. What does it mean? And then God brought me to Revelation chapter 17 in the Bible. It's right the last very chapter in the Bible. All right, the last book, the last book, not chapter. The last book of the Bible is Revelation and it's chapter 17. So I'm going to come in and out a little bit, but like I said, it's a long one today. So bear with me, grab a drink, grab something to eat, <laughs> whatever makes you comfortable, but it's a bit of a long one. So I'm going to try and dissect it a little bit. I'm not going to go into it in real detail because otherwise we'll be here forever. So I just want to kind of go through what I saw in my dream and then what I saw when I looked at Revelation 17. So the word may not seem inspirational to you at first. It may seem quite raw, quite shocking, you know, but please stick with me because it actually means something. OK, and so this is the reason why I said hence the warning. OK, so. This one is actually called the woman on the red beast. All right. The woman on the red beast. And I'm not actually going to be talking about the whole lot of that. But um, if you actually went back to the Olympics, yeah, the Olympics that was in the United Kingdom. There was a woman and she was on top of this like ball type creature and came in to the middle, you know, of the arena. And that's what made me think of Revelation chapter 17 also, the woman on the, the red beast. Anyway, but let's go ahead. Let's read. Let's read it. It says, one of the seven angels came and spoke to me. This was one of the angels that had the seven bowls. The angel said, come and I will show you the punishment that will be given to the famous prostitute. She is the one sitting over many waters. The rulers of the earth sinned sexually with her. The people of the earth became drunk from the wine of her sexual sin. Then the angel carried me away by the spirit to the desert. There I saw a woman sitting on a red beast. The beast was covered with evil names. It had seven heads and ten horns. The woman was dressed in purple and red. She was shining with the gold, jewels and pearls that she was wearing. She had a golden cup in her hand. This cup was filled with terrible, evil things and the filth of her sexual sin. She had a title written on her forehead. This title has a hidden meaning. 
This is what was written, the great Babylon, mother of prostitutes and the evil things of the earth. I saw the woman was drunk. She was drunk with the blood of God's holy people. She was drunk with the blood of those who told about their faith in Jesus. When I saw the woman, I was fully amazed. Then the angel said to me, why are you amazed? I tell you the hidden meaning of this woman and the beast she rides. The beast with the seven heads and ten horns. The beast you saw was once alive, but now it is not. However, it will come out of the bottomless pit and go away to be destroyed. The people who live on earth will be amazed when they see the beast. Because it was once alive and it is no longer living, but will come again. And these are the people whose names have never been written in the book of life since the beginning of the world. You need wisdom to understand this. The seven heads on the beast are the seven hills where the woman sits. There are seven rulers. Five of the rulers have already died. One of the rulers lives now and the last ruler is coming. When he comes, he will stay only a short time. The beast that was once alive but is no longer living is an eighth ruler. The eighth ruler also belongs to the first seven rulers and he will go away to be destroyed. The ten horns you saw are ten rulers. These ten rulers have not yet been, have not yet received their kingdom, but they will receive power to rule with the beast for one hour. All ten of these rulers have the same purpose and they will give their power and authority to the beast. They will make war against the lamb but the lamb will defeat them because he is the Lord. He's the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings and with him will be his chosen and faithful followers. The people he has called to be his. Then the angel said to me, you saw the waters where the prostitute sits. These waters are the many peoples, the different races, nations and languages in the world. Now, this is quite a lot, isn't it? This was, remember, Revelation 17 and verses 1 to 15, okay? So if we go back again, it talks about the prostitute, right? The prostitute on, on the many waters. And to me, the prostitute that came up was the Statue of Liberty. Because if you look at the Statue of Liberty, she looks like a woman with a crown holding a torch, and it's kind of a cup, isn't it? And it's kind of gold because the top of it is gold. So if you look here again, it says, let's see if I can find it. Yeah, she's the one that's sitting on many waters. Okay. And the woman is dressed in purple and red and she was shining with gold jewels and pearls. And what she was wearing, she had a golden cup in her hand. So that actually looks like what the Statue of Liberty is except the Statue of Liberty is not wearing purple or red. She's not wearing purple or red. But what is purple and red? Purple and red is actually the flag of the U United States of America, you know? And if you look at the flag of the United States of America, it's blue and it's red and it has these white stripes, but it also has like little white dots on it I think as well I don't know if I've actually got my thing up here yes in the blue part it has like white stars I think it does let me just have a quick look at it let's see what it looks like and then yeah it has white stars on it white stripes between the red and it has white stars so those white stars could actually be the pearls yeah the actual pearls so let's have a little look again so where are the waters that this prostitute sits? And the Statue of Liberty actually sits on the upper New York, New York Bay. And the seven heads or the seven rulers, right, which could be leaders, yeah, are the seven spikes that spike out on the crown of the Statue of Liberty's head, okay? And these are again seven 
the seven rulers, leaders, and the statue. Yeah, that's on the Statue of Liberty's head. And then also it says the ten horns. So as you know, the Statue of Liberty doesn't have horns on their head. But the ten horns represents ten kingdoms of the world. Ten kingdoms, okay? And a lot of them are not here now, according to it, okay? And a lot of the rulers are not actually here now. Some of them, they said, have passed away. So it's all very strange, isn't it? Because the Statue of Liberty, it also says where, where it sits is where all the nations of the world are from different races, languages, and where they live or reside. So to me, this news is really dark, to say the least, because like I said, when I saw it, I couldn't explain it. But when I went to Revelation 17, it made sense. It made a lot of sense. But I'm telling you, even though the Statue of Liberty sits on the seas, okay, it's not just talking about the United States of America. It's not just talking about the US. It's talking about the world as a whole, where this Statue of Liberty sits. It sits on top of the world of all religions, all races. Because if you remember, the United States of America is very big, very, very big. And it's actually one of the biggest kingdoms or nations of the world. And many nations are underneath it, or many nations actually follow the lead of the United States of America, you know, because they are, you know, sort of the leading um, nation of the West, the Western world. And so that's why, to me, it just seems really shocking because I couldn't really fathom and put it together. But I'm not the first person that's actually seen this. And I know there's other things that people have actually seen. But I don't know why this one just really did shock me. But it really did. And so let's just move on a little bit. And so why I'm telling you this is because it talks about the last days, the sign of the times. And as I've spoken about many of my inspirational Ingrid videos, I've spoken about earthquakes and volcanoes and floods and famine and drought. You know, you would think, why is my thing called Inspirational Ingrid? The reason why I come on is because I want to explain to you about what is being said into the Bible. I want to explain to you about what happened in 2020 since COVID-19 hit and even before that and how the world has changed and how it continues to change. Um, it's just that there's so much unusual things going on and the world is definitely not the same since 2020. It's definitely not the same. The only difference is we might be back to normality in some form, shape or form. But the thing is, there's lots of other things that are going on in the world. So that's quite shocking. And that doesn't happen. I mean, the climate is going wild. You know, where it's cold, it's hot. And where it's hot, it's cold. And vice versa. So like I said, we've got sign of the times that is happening on Earth that we can actually see. So... You know, the cost of living is so high. It's so high. And that's almost like a famine itself. You know, places don't have water anymore. It's just so dry. So that means the, the actual farmlands can't grow or produce. And if farmlands can't produce, that means there's no food to put into the supermarkets. There's no food to put in the grocery shop. And if there's no food to put in the grocery shops, there's no food for you and me to put into our, into our household. There's nothing there. And the fact that everything has risen, you know, people are really struggling now. I mean, really struggling. And it's not people that just don't work. I'm talking about people that actually work. OK, you, you've got a couple. Both of you are, are bringing in a wage, but you can't afford the rent. You can't afford the mortgage. You can't afford the utility bills. You can't afford the shopping. You can't afford to put your children into um, nursery or education, you know, you can't afford to run your car. It's so many things that are happening right now. And the thing is, if you're not affected, you don't notice it. You're doing well if you're not affected. But if you are affected, this is a real shock to the system. But this is the reality of today. The food banks that we have in the United Kingdom is crazy. I'm not just talking about homeless people going in 
you know, to soup kitchens. I'm talking about people that actually work. They actually sneak into the food banks, you know. They feel ashamed. They feel like, why should we be sneaking in? But they do. They sneak into the food banks because they also need food. They need to feed their families. Otherwise, they'll starve. And this is how serious it is today. It's so serious. So, like I said, you know, people are just barely making ends meet right now. And like I said, the floods recently are, are in very unusual places. Texas. Texas is meant to be really hot, like a desert, you know, dry country land where cactus grow. Texas. Dubai. Dubai is a desert. We're not supposed to have floods in the desert. Brazil. Brazil also has um, a, a Statue of Liberty figure in their centre. And the, when I saw one of the videos of Brazil, the water was so high right up until the statue. And I was like, wow. I mean, that is just ridiculous. You know, and Kenya, another hot country. These countries don't have rains like they, they have, they've been having. You know, it, it's rained how many days worth in one day. So that means that, you know, people are out of their homes. And if they're in their homes, there's no electric. Yeah, no electric. You can't use a mobile phone if you have one. You can't feed yourself. Everything's ruined in the house. There's no food. No food. You've got no furniture. You can't even grab your clothes. Everything in your household is ruined by these floods. Everything. Gone. This is how serious it is. I saw yesterday um, a horse that was standing on top of the roof in Brazil because the water had actually risen on top of the house. Yeah, that's how serious it is. I mean, if you don't believe me, go and have a look. It's all on YouTube. It's on the news. It's everywhere. And during these times, a few weeks ago as well, during the time that the Statue of Liberty was struck by lightning, there was um, an iceberg that I heard about, and it was one of the largest icebergs in Antarctica. And it, it had come away and it was just floating in the ocean. And they said that once that iceberg melted, you know, or evaporated into the water, it would actually cause a tsunami, a massive flood. Like I said, this is climate change. The earth is very warm. And so for an iceberg, one of the largest ones, I think, I can't remember how big it was, but they said it was big as how many football stadiums, you know, and it was even bigger than some countries in the Caribbean. This is how big it was. And imagine all of that, you know, ice turning into water. Imagine how the waves would be going. They'd just be rising. And that's what's just happened. It's just been absolutely crazy. So if these are not the sign of the times, I really don't know what it is. But the thing is, the Bible explains to us what the signs of the times are. And, you know, we've had um, strange things happening in the sky, you know, in the, in the universe. Things have been going on up there. There's, there's meant to be the, 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 the death comet or something like that. I kind of remember what it's called. We've had the eclipses not long ago. Um, just last night, we've had the Northern Lights. Um, I went as far as Finland many years ago to see the Northern Lights. I actually fell asleep, <laughs> but I never saw any lights. I didn't see anything. You know, I was there for a good couple of days. I never saw any Northern Lights. And last night I saw the pink sky, the pink sky. I didn't stay up late enough to see any more. But I actually saw for the first time in my life part of the Northern Lights. And this was seen all over the majority of the UK and many other countries around the world also. Everyone has just been posting like all of their pictures online. It's, it's actually beautiful. It's really beautiful to look at. And again, I think it's happening tonight again. So, you know, I might be able to catch it again. Maybe, maybe I'll see a bit more green, you know, a bit more of the purpley arrays and not just the pink. But this is what is going on. These are the signs of the times. And... And as I was going to say, but the real shocking news to me recently is the news that they wanted to ban the Holy Bible in certain countries. Now, for me, I was thinking, what? 
um, the Bible is my is my go to. The Bible is something that's been in my family and for all my ancestors and generations and generations before that. Um, the Bible is my faith. The Bible is the source of life, the source of instruction, the source of comfort, the source of encouragement. It, it, it inspires you. And to know that they're actually going to ban it. I mean, I don't know if it was the whole Bible or if it was just the New Testament. I'm probably going to have to read about it properly. But I just looked at that and I thought, wow, that is an eye opener. Um, we are in the last days. We are in some serious, serious days right now. Um, because countries have been built on the word of God. You know, countries have been built based on the Bible. So you're actually taking away God's word out of the world. You can't remove God. God is the creator of heaven and earth. God is the creator of all beings and all things. God's holy word is based in the Bible. And if this was supposed to happen, I would actually call today the days of Noah. That's what I would actually call today. The days of Noah is when the people were very wicked, very bad, and terrible things used to happen in the world, just terrible things. And God created the flood. He created the flood and he only saved Noah and his family. And Noah and his family, as you know, took in two of every animal, okay? Onto the ark, which he built. But God said he would never bring a flood like that again. And that's why we have the rainbow today. The rainbow is a reminder that God said he would never destroy the earth by a flood. But he will come again. He will come again. And, you know, if, if, if people really destroy, try to destroy, you know, the Bible and the word and, you know, the world is totally going to change. And it will be pure destruction. That's all I can see is pure destruction. Because the, the, the earth was built on the world of God. Many people don't know this, but the earth was actually built on the word of God. Where he created everything within six days, rested on the seventh. Created man and woman so that they could multiply the earth and many of the animals and everything else. This would actually be the end. So you're probably thinking, Ingrid, you're not inspiring me right now. Oh, no, no, this is heavy. This is why I said this is warning. This is a warning video. Um, like I said, I love to encourage everyone. I really do. So in Acts 2, between verses 14 to 21, I'm not even sure where I grabbed this from, but it's between those verses anyway. And talking about the signs of the times and the northern lights and all the other happenings, the eclipses and everything that's going on. This is what Acts 2 says. It says, in the last days, God says, I'll set wonders in the sky above and signs on the earth below. Blood and fire billowing smoke. The sun turning black and the moon blood red. Before the day of the Lord arrives the day tremendous and marvellous, and whoever calls out for help to me, God, will be saved. So that is actually the good news. God wants you to call out to him so that you will be saved. You know, God doesn't want anyone to perish. This is not who he is. God is a man, um, he's not even a man. God is a person. He's not even a person, he's a spirit. He's, 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 he's He's an all-being, all-knowing. But God loves his children. He loves his children. And he wants all of them to be saved. That's why he sent his son. He wants all of them to be saved, okay? Jesus would not have died for nothing and no reason if he did not want the world to be saved. So again, you might say, what is the good news? 
Well, the day that the Lord arrives, he will save his people. And don't forget, Jesus was called the Good Shepherd. And he would leave the 99 and he would go looking for that one sheep. And that's what I'm saying. Jesus doesn't want just the 99. He wants the whole hundred. He wants everyone. And that's the reason why I'm speaking today. That is the very reason. So my word today that I actually posted online is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verses 1 to 2. And it says, now brothers and sisters, about times and dates we do, we do not need to write to you. For you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. You know that. Nobody knows the day nor the hour that the Lord will come. Not even the Lord himself. He does not know. The angels do not know. We just don't know. We can predict, yeah, the sign of the times. Because the Bible tells us these are the last days. This is what was going to happen in the last days. Okay. So that's why I'm actually doing my video today. I'm actually talking about the last days. But remember, a day to God could be, you know, a day to us. But to God, it could be like a thousand years. So when God says he's coming soon, his soon is a different soon. It doesn't mean to say it's in 2024. It doesn't mean to say it's in 2025. His soon is a different soon, but his soon still could be tomorrow. And that's the actual point. So, because we don't know, we need to be ready. You know, and if you haven't accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your saviour yet, I think now is the time. Now is the time to get ready before he returns because we don't know when he will return. A lot of people say, oh, no, it's not now. Oh, no, I've got plenty to do. I've got plenty to do. I've got enough time before he comes back. It's not the time. We don't know when the time is. And we don't know when our time is up either. We don't know that. So if anything happened to us before we accepted the Lord, for ourselves, we would have run out of time. We would really have run out of time. And that's why I'm kind of pressuring, you know, putting on pressure, you know, putting on these warning signs to say, we might not have a lot of time left. We just don't know. But in the meantime, we need to be obedient. In the meantime, we need to stay steadfast. And the meet in the meantime, we need Jesus in our lives. That's what we need. So just like the bridegroom, which is Jesus, he's coming back for his bride, which is us. OK, so you want to make sure that your lamps have oil and that you're ready. You don't want to be like those foolish brides where they didn't have any oil in their lamps. They weren't ready. They missed the bridegroom. They missed him. So you don't want to miss him. OK. You don't want to turn back for anything, nothing. There is nothing for you to look back for when he returns. Because on that day, if you know that you belong to God, you will be caught up together with those who are alive and those who are dead. They will meet in the clouds in the air with the Lord and they will be with the Lord forever and ever and ever. Amen. So that is the good news. The good news is, once you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your saviour for yourself, that is when you will live in eternity with the Lord, in eternity in heaven. And that is his promise. And that's why I wanted to talk about this today. I want you to start looking around. I want you to start watching what's going on i want you to read your bibles while you still can i want you to speak to your father yourself ask him what's going on ask him what you need to do ask him what you need to change even yeah repent of any sins you know forgive anyone that you haven't forgiven yet you know let go others that you need to let go of you know walk on the path 
that God has paved for you. Walk on that path and stay in alignment with your father. And once you do all of those things, you will be fine. You will be fine. Anyway, this is the end of my video. I could have gone on forever. I think I've already gone on 30 minutes, which is much longer than I've done. This is how I used to speak in the, in the, the beginning um, when I first came on to YouTube. But now I just want you to have a look at things. I want you to question um, what I said today. Um, it might not have been right what I've said. Um, you know, lots of people have so many different opinions. This is just what I saw personally. I don't know if it's right. I, I, I don't know. I, I That's why I went back to God time and time again about it. But, you know, you go to God about it. Um, you see what God is telling you. You know, God said that he would give people dreams. He would make people prophesy in the last days. You know, you might see a vision that I haven't seen. You might have dreamt something that I, I haven't actually seen or heard about. But remember, there is nothing new under the sun that hasn't happened before. Nothing. Everything that has been written has been written and has been done. A lot of it already. But remember, if it has been prophesied, it will come to pass. Because God is not like a man that he should lie. Everything that God promised would happen, will happen. Anyway. I just want you to remember to be ready for Jesus's return because you are a child of God. You are special. You are unique. You are chosen and you are very much loved by your father in heaven. So may God continue to lead, guide and protect you. May God continue to bless you and make his face just to shine upon you and give you perfect peace. Amen. So I just want to thank you again for joining me today. I know it's been a long one. I know you might not been able to stay with me on this one. It's really long, really challenging, but I really wanted to get this out today. Um, like I said, it's been on my heart for so long. I just didn't know how to explain it. And I don't even know if I've explained it well today, but I've got it out there. And um, I just want to be obedient sometimes. You know, you're not really obedient because you don't know what to do. But I knew that this word had to come out at some point. And maybe it's come out at the right time, because like I said, there's so much things going on in this world and people just don't realise it. I think sometimes we go around with a blindfold, but sometimes we need to take off that blindfold and we need to actually see and acknowledge what is going on in this world. Yeah, there's just so much. So ask God for wisdom, knowledge and understanding. So like I said, thank you again for joining me today. Thank you for all those that continue to support my channel. May God richly bless you always and forever. So don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I'm going to say bye for now. Until next time, keep enjoying the weather and pray for those that are going through those difficult times. Okay, take care. Speak soon. Bye.